Many people experience a lot of confusion when it comes to understanding the nature of this one person in their life. They feel hesitant to call this person a narcissist or the relationship with them a narcissistic relationship because of many, many, many factors. One of the factors being the comparison with the relationships they have had in the past or the comparison with a non-narcissistic relationship. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. And today in this episode, we're going to thoroughly understand what does it mean to be in a narcissistic relationship? What does it look like to be with a narcissist? What does it feel like? We're also going to understand the three stages of a narcissistic relationship thoroughly to create clarity. Before we begin, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel by pressing the subscribe button and push the bell icon so that you stay updated with everything latest that I post here. So let's get started. Probably by now you may know that there are three stages of a narcissistic relationship, namely idealization, devaluation and discard. A person who is with a narcissist who goes through narcissistic abuse goes through these three stages, maybe in a different order, in a different way, but ultimately this is the structure of a narcissistic relationship. In the beginning, they treat you as the most special person in their life. They put you on the pedestal, but as time goes on, slowly, slowly, their behavior starts to change and they start devaluing you. They start treating you like a piece of trash and ultimately the discard happens. So this is how it is like overall, in a nutshell, to be with a narcissist. But let's dive deep in and let's understand each stage in much more depth to create clarity. Beginning with the idealization or otherwise called love bombing, a narcissist treats you in the best way possible. They give you the best behavior. They are kind, they're charming, they're present, they're affectionate, they're loving, they're caring. You can imagine anything good and they are that. Basically and essentially, they first study your needs, they see what you're looking for and ultimately they become that so that you feel that this is the person, this is the person you were looking for throughout your life. This is the provider of my needs. This is a fulfiller of my dreams. This is the Prince Charming riding towards you. This is your person. This is probably your soulmate. This is how they make you feel in this idealization state. They future fake you. They give you all the dreams to hold on to. But ultimately, this is all an illusion. This love bombing in the idealization stage happens just to gain control over your heart and head. And once they gain this control, the devaluation stage starts. Before we even talk about devaluation state, let's try to compare the idealization state in a narcissistic relationship and in a non-narcissistic relationship. In a, no, in a non-narcissistic relationship, it is quite similar in the beginning because there is infatuation, there is charm, there is this dance that is going on where one person is trying to understand the moves of the other and then they are trying to know each other, each other's values, belief systems, perceptions, importances and everything else. And this is the stage where there is intensity, where, is this, where there, is this, um, there is this spark that connects these two people, that creates this bond which definitely is weak, but it is quite similar. However, what happens next is quite different. What happens next is something that doesn't happen in a narcissistic relationship. Coming back to the narcissistic relationship, with the start or with the beginning of devaluation stage, the narcissist suddenly and ab abruptly starts losing interest in you. If they were calling you all the time, now they hardly pick up your calls. If they were messaging, messaging you all the time, they hardly look at your messages or even reply back. They start ignoring you. The things they called you as to be your qualities become your flaws now. They start putting you down. They start demoralizing you. They start making you think that you are the crazy one, that you are not the person they wanted or they thought you were. Everything takes a U-turn. Essentially, they become the opposite of who they were in the beginning. Everything is gone, that charm is gone, that intensity is gone, that connection seems to be gone. And at this point, a person who is unaware of narcissists and narcissistic relationships starts to blame themselves, starts to think that probably maybe 
I did something wrong. Maybe I might have done something to set them off and that's why I am being uh, denied this way. That's why I am being discarded this way. That's why I am being ignored this way. And then they try more. They give in more. They change their personalities. personality. They give up on their values. They give up on their belief system just to try to fit in more. And if you are a tra- so if this person is the survivor of childhood trauma, they have the history of trauma and the patterns. That is, this is the point where those uh, patterns get activated and the childhood trauma stuff comes onto the surface and then that plays a big role. Taking you back to the normal relationship, slowly, slowly as the spark uh, diminishes a little bit and the, and the intensity lowers, a state of vulnerability begins where the person, where these two people get to see the real self of each other. They get to see what lies at the core. They start becoming more comfortable with each other. Probably at this stage, they are not calling each other every single hour in in a day or they're not messaging constantly, but they have a stability. That bond has strengthened itself and they have object constancy, which means each of the partner knows that even if this um, back and forth is not happening within the communication, there exists as a bond which is beyond verbal communication. They feel non-verbally connected. They start trusting each other. The trust hasn't it doesn't need to be displayed through actions or words, essentially. It just is understood. It just is, it's known that it is there. And they see this invisible cord they, that connects both of them. And then the things start easing up a little bit. They start distancing, but distancing in a healthy way. They, even in this distancing, they are connected invisibly which is completely opposite to what happens in a devaluation stage. If you are with a narcissist, this is not what you are going to experience. What you are going to experience instead is hypervigilance, walking on eggshells all the time, wondering what you did wrong, and they blaming you all the time. You would be questioning your own esteem, your own worth, your own qualities. Your personality would be breaking down. You would stop recognizing yourself. You would start settling for the breadcrumbs. You would try more and more and more and give more and more and more, but still nothing would be enough. And they would show you the glimpses of who they were in the beginning just to keep you in the relationship. And when they do this, you may think that they, you have that balance and homeostasis back and you may, that would be the trick they would play to keep you trapped. Moving ahead and moving on with the discard, which definitely doesn't happen in normal non-narcissistic relationship. These two people in the non-narcissistic relationship become stronger with each day that passes. If it is a, a heterogeneous relationship, they may decide to have kids, they may expand their family, and then this love is manifested through the kids they have. And their strong, their bond becomes stronger with each year that passes, with each month that goes on, with each day. They get to know each other, but they are not so involved in each other as they were in the beginning or in the middle. Now they are more involved in the creation that they have created and they connect through them. Coming back to the narcissistic relationship, this is not the case. What happens is, ultimately, slowly, when the narcissist sucks the life force out of you, when they dry you out, when they take all the supply out of you and it takes years, it takes years to get to that point, you feel emotionally dead. You have nothing more to give. You are left like a shell of yours. And when that happens, the discard is inevitable. This, this narcissist then moves to a different form of supply, like a parasite. Even though they also have different sources of supply while they were in the relationship, but let's say the relationship got extended to the point where they had to discard you and you did not leave, but they discarded you. They they do this when there is nothing else to take from you. They have taken everything, now you are of no use to them. Essentially, a narcissist treats you like an object. They use and use and use and take everything that they can from this object and essentially this object expires in their head and they throw it out like a piece of trash, like a piece of furniture that just has no utility now. With 
a non narcissistic person that is never going to happen even if you break up you still know that there is a connection it is mutual you are not left wondering well if he was nice or if she was so nice why would he do this and why would he do that you have crystal clarity around and about who this person was the person you were with what their nature was what their personality was you are you do not have this inconsistent compartmentalization in your memories where you have different set of good memories and then the other set is all bad memories and you are sandwiched and confused between the two that is not what is going on or what would happen if you are with a narcissist a non narcissistic person so these are the core differences between the two and i hope you were able to understand that even though in the beginning things may look quite similar between a narcissistic and a non narcissistic relationship essentially and ultimately these two relationships take different directions and different paths that are completely opposite to each other a narcissist will make you doubt your own existence will make you rethink your own values your own life and the reasons behind why you are alive while as a non narcissist would add value to your life would give you more reasons to live longer would give meaning to your existence they would add to your life while as a narcissist would subtract and take away i hope today's episode was insightful for you guys and you understood thoroughly what it means or what what it feels like to go through these stages uh of a narcissistic relationship and how it is different than a non narcissistic relationship i will talk with you very soon till then let the healing begin